and go back to the race uh, today, when we're coming to the start of the first overtime and you see the, the six pull off and go into pit lane, um, I, I know you knew his fuel situation, but what's going through your head at that moment? Well, leading into it, you know, we had a lot of communication on our radio about, you know, Brad was going to be really close on fuel and, you know, he may run out of fuel under these cautions. And um, so I was going to choose behind him no matter what lane he took, um, just because, just a, in hopes that he would run out um, before you know, we got to the restart zone. And, you know, I was trying to pay attention to him and he was, you know, cycling his engine and, and you know, warm, trying to clean and warm his tires up just to, you know, see if there was any bit of stumble. Um, and then, yeah, he just ducked off on a pit road. And I was like, wow, like, I can't believe this is going exactly how, you know, we had kind of hoped and, and had thought about. So, you know, then I came to the restart zone and I'm sure Ryan and I were both probably confused on like who is now the control car. Um, I didn't know. I could tell like maybe he didn't know. So we kind of both, I felt like took off at like the same time. Um, you know, the pace was up a little bit faster. So it was just a, a bit confusing, but, um, you know, I was able to get the, the position into one and then you know, saw a big crash in my mirror and was a little bit bummed because, you know, I knew it'd be really hard to pass me um, after clearing to the lead. But, uh, yeah, I had to sit through a, a lengthy red flag and kind of replay some things in my mind about, you know, how this next restart might work out. And, you know, thankfully it, um, it, it just worked out um, where I could get barely clear. He did a better job the second time to, to hang with me. I thought he might almost have leverage enough to stay side by side exit of one. Because if he would have stayed with me exit of one, you know, who knows how the, who knows who wins, you know, we're probably three wide down the back stretch with the 45 coming. So, um, yeah, just think that I was able to edge out through one. All right. Um, we'll try to get around to everybody's questions. We'll go to Dustin next. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Kyle, a couple questions. Um, after the first pit stop, you're following Chase and he gets caught with the blend line violation and you, had two tires over, but came and I think I had two on the line, really close. What was your understanding of the rule? And did you, when you saw Chase, did you think he's in trouble? And did that kind of help keep you off the line in any way? Well, so, um, I mean, we kind of, as a team, communi or communicated or tried to on Friday of like, what is the rule? None of us knew what the rule was. And I don't think NASCAR initially knew what the rule was um, because then we started kind of getting communication with them afterwards. You know, I think Chad Canales was kind of getting our opinion, um, drivers on a group text we were in and, and all that. And because uh, when I was here for the 500, you're allowed to kind of straddle that that first white line. Like you're not allowed to get your lefts over it. Um, so I was kind of used to that and, and did that on Friday. Um, but then I think it was Saturday, probably before the Xfinity race, I think they had released the rule where, because there's, there's what, I don't know, two white lines or something. The way I understood the rule was that you couldn't get your right sides over the far white line because then you would be deemed on the racing surface. So um, that's what I did. Um, and, yeah, I was falling chase, and he, he swung way out. And, um, yeah, I was like, man, that's got to be a penalty. Um, but if it's not, you know, at least I know like how much further I can swing out. So yeah, I think it took him a couple laps to maybe find a replay I'm guessing of it. And then, yeah, ultimately he got a penalty and, and I didn't. So I knew that, you know, what I did was legal. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. In the situation where Brad pulls off pit road late there, is it fair to Blaney in that situation that he is now the control car, but he's in the outside lane, which is disadvantageous. Is that a situation where he should be given an opportunity to, to repick, basically? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the correct answer. Um, sure, if I was in his, his position, you know, maybe. But that, the way the rule is written currently, you know, it's not. And um, it just it would have been, I don't know, it would have taken a lot of time. I mean, it would have taken a couple more laps of, of caution um, because they would have had to quickly, you know, quickly call off the restart, 
and then we'd have to go single file another time and then choose and then go. So, I mean, I don't know what's that, two, two extra laps. So, you know, that's kind of boring, you know, especially on a two and a half mile track. Like that's minutes uh, of time going by. So I'm sure there's, they're probably going to, I'm, I'm sure they're going to look at it, you know, NASCAR and, and see what they come up with. But um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I don't, I don't know the right answer for sure.